Morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. Um, it's really my pleasure to be here joining all of you. I'm looking forward to an incredible day. I'm going to say I'm looking forward to an invigorating discussion, out of the box thinking, um, and just incredibly creative interactions. And so we're, you know, buckle up, put your seatbelt on, because this is going to be a fantastic day. Pregnancy is, is a nearly universal experience for women. Um, eight out of ten women in this country will be pregnant at some point in their lives, and it's a very special time. But it also has unique and dynamic uh, physiologic changes associated with it. And chronic conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity, if left untreated, are directly associated with pregnancy-related issues. In turn, complications experienced during pregnancy, as you heard earlier, can portend the future of women. You also heard from Dr. McCloskey that over half of the women who develop gestational diabetes GDM during their pregnancy will develop type 2 diabetes five to 10 years later, putting them at risk for heart disease. And pregnant women who experience pregnancy-induced hypertension or preeclampsia double their risk for stroke and quadruple their risk of high blood pressure later in life. Also, women who have low, low, very low birth weight babies or other complications during pregnancy have a several fold increased risk of mortality from cardiovascular causes later in life. And you'll hear from some of the speakers that the United States has a very high maternal mortality rate compared to our peer countries. Ours is increasing. Theirs is decreasing. This is even more alarming, as you heard from Lois, because of the racial and ethnic fault lines that we see. African American mothers die at three times the rate of white mothers. Clearly, we must act. Clearly, we've got to do a better job at connecting dots. We must unsilo the many health services that women access, including primary care. Urology, endocrinology, OBGYN, cardiovascular care, to name a few. We have to address the barriers to identifying and treating women with chronic conditions before pregnancy, uh, long before pregnancy, and in turn through pregnancy and afterwards. At the research level, we must employ a multi dimensional approach and support research that intentionally and deliberately integrates all of these issues, bridges all of these chasms, and includes a focus on sex and gender. I'm going to tell you just briefly a little bit about some of the OWH efforts here. By, by studying sex, and we mean being male or female, and accounting for that across the entire biomedical research spectrum, examining those internal influences from being male or female at the level of the molecule, at the cellular level, at the level of organs, um, in those studies before the clinic, preclinical, as well as in the clinic. But by studying gender as well, we mean unpacking the complex, multi-layered external factors that affect women's health as a lived experience. These include, but are not limited, the competing expectations that come from our role as women, as workers, as caretakers, as mothers, as daughters, as sisters, as aunties, as community members, and everything in between as well as policies and regulations that affect our ability to contribute to the workforce. Environmental and structural factors, organizational dynamics, uh, including issues related to where you live, where we work, uh, how much money we make, our educational access, all of which can have profound and indelible consequences on the health of women across our lifespan. And lastly, behavioral and lifestyle factors um, like sleep, social interaction, how much we move, how much we exercise, and our use of alcohol, tobacco, and drugs as well that can either serve as risk or protective factors later in life. We clearly must also bring a life course approach. And the logo that it, that uh, the highlighted really uh, brings that image in mind. <laughs> By that we mean viewing women's health as certainly stretching from all the way to that woman's in utero experience in her mother, to conception, adolescence, pregnancy, and early and late adulthood across the entire 
lifespan because experiences in one phase of a woman's life clearly can have cascading effects to other phases. And at ORWH, the Office of Research on Women's Health at NIH, we have a threefold mission, expanding women's health research, making sure women are included and diverse populations are included in NIH-supported clinical research, and promoting women advancing in STEM careers or biomedical careers. We have a new vision, and that is threefold again. The first is that sex and gender influences are integrated into the biomedical research continuum. Every woman receives evidence-based disease prevention and treatment tailored to her own needs, circumstances, and goals. And then women in science reach their full potential. We believe that exciting things lay ahead, and we're optimistic about that road. So we need more meetings like this. Uh, this two-day uh, conference provides us with a rare opportunity to step back and reflect and to let ourselves imagine. To reflect on how we listen, to whom we listen, how we synthesize information and account for what is missing and how we communicate. Unpacking how we really do what we do, how we respond or choose not to respond, are all critically important if we seek to bridge the chasm across the health of women during pregnancy and their entire lives. It's critically important if we're going to bridge that chasm as well as the chasm uh, involving many sectors, many disciplines, many fields, and many ways of thinking. So at the end of these two days, I hope to see unlocked new possibilities and unleashed new energy focused to benefit the health of women. Thank you.